Hello, traders. It is Wednesday, April 17th, and it sounds like Harry has just joined me. So we are going to have a live event. As always, we like to start out with our previous picks so that you can see how they've performed. We'll do some market analysis. And then, of course, we're going to answer your questions. Take a look at some of the stock symbols that you've got in mind. When you do post a stock symbol, both Harry and I ask, please tell us why you like it or why you hate it. Let us know what your rationale is behind it. Oftentimes, we just get a symbol. How do you like X, Y, Z? How do you like it? You long? You short? So anyway, if you can provide us with that flavor, tell us what you're thinking, then we're able to give you better feedback. Hello, Harry. How are you doing today? Hey, Pete. Pretty good. How are you? Things are good. We've got uh, kind of a fun market to work with here. So... We yeah. should be able to uh, find some picks. What was your pick last week? My pick last week was uh, CVS short. Still good. And so CVS has been a great short. In fact, I posted it in the chat room again this morning early on. I absolutely love this gap higher yesterday. Look at that thing get pounded down. That is some serious whack-a-mole oh no you don't there's the gap up early in the day blam that is a real sign of selling pressure and then the stock never recovers that sets up this drift lower today so i really like that one i can't make it my pick of the day two weeks in a row what was your uh what was your pick that you had last uh, week? I was the video long, I believe. And okay. if you took the video long last Wednesday, it was just a matter of how much profit you wanted to take. Anywhere, I think when I called it, it was at around 850. And anywhere between 850 and 905, which is where it went to th during the week, you would have done well. So um if you took NVIDIA long, uh, that would have worked out well for you. So both those picks would have been profitable for anyone that uh, uh, decided to follow them. For sure. Yeah. Look at that. You had that compression and then that breakout. And the one thing about this pick is that when you got that breakout, I noticed on Thursday, you did not hesitate to take gains and to exit into that strength. So right. very nicely done. And I've had a couple of other picks along the way I just wanted to highlight. This is from more than 10 days ago. It was Micron, MU. This is before we had that big uh, sell-off before the jobs report. And yep. the stock is feeling some pressure in here. But the idea was, I still like the stock, was to wait until the stock came back to that EMA 8. So your opportunity to get long was there. And the stock did hold up but when you had the market starting to crumble there's no reason to get long so you should have held off on that i've had some uh uh bearish picks in the meantime i've had uh let's see here uh the last video i did while well, starbucks was one of the picks that i had in there on the short side this is from a week ago sunday that was actually a nice short ACN was a short that I highlighted in my last video. It's a nice short, but I want to get closer to that EMA 8 before taking that short position. And then I gave you a long to look at last week as well, which was SPOT. Look at how well that stock has held up when the market has pulled back sharply. This stock wants to go higher, but again, everything is based on the market. And right now, we're starting to see some pretty decent selling pressure. And this was the candle from Monday. So the market gapped up and then closed on its low. We had a doji yesterday. So market was not able to rally into that long red candle. Today we are getting follow through selling to the downside. So you can see that. Now we'll each talk about uh, the market. Harry and I are actually in agreement that we both believe there is a bounce coming, but we don't know when that bounce is going to be coming or how deep this drop is going to be. So in here, we knew we were going to get a probe for support. So yes, you can start favoring both sides in here until you get a breakdown in here. That's why my picks have been on the short side. 
So now we get this drift lower, we're keeping them short term, we're sticking to day trades because we know that there's a risk of a bounce. How can both of us be so confident that a bounce is coming? Well, this strong, strong price action tells us that a bounce will happen. We just don't know from what level, the deeper and longer this dip lasts, the less likely we are to take out the high. So as bulls, we would want to see a very small pullback here, very brief, and that provides us with a slingshot to a new all-time high. But if we don't get that, we keep pulling back and pulling back, maybe to this 100-day moving average even, then the bounce is probably going to make a lower high double top, and then we've got a real opportunity to look for some shorts this summer. So, Harry, what's kind of what's your thought uh, process right now? I just don't see any reason for the market to break 500 here. I mean, 500 is a fairly strong psychological level of support. I mean, obviously, if there's not an SMA there, there's not a, um, a trend line that's covering it. But, you know, when you get to these numbers on SPY, like um, 400, 500, 300, and we've seen it each time, and you can go back historically and look, um, you see, you know, a lot of, uh, sometimes you see a bounce right off that level, right? Um, in order to break straight through, in order to just drop straight down, you need a, a, a catalyst. You need something that's going to push the market to break what is normally thought of as a very strong level of support. I don't see that we have that here, particularly with earnings coming up. Now, sure, ASML kicked us off this morning and their earnings were lackluster, but, um, you know, that's just the first of many, and they're not uh, usually considered a huge top indicator earning. So with earnings coming around next week in tech, most of them, obviously, we have Netflix tomorrow, um, and you have that 500 basis support. Um, I'm favoring more of a bounce up as we head into earnings rather than a hanging around 500. But, uh, you know, we will see. Volume isn't great right now. So this is not, you know, this is more of a buyer's boycott than it is uh, anything else that I see. But I still see a bounce off 500 and uh, a head back to where we were. I mean, uh, you know, could the bounce be violent? It could, yeah. Um, but that, that's what I'm looking at with the market. But, you know, um, there are shorts that I like. For example, I put on a short for ARM this morning. And um, I really like the arm short. Uh, I did a put debit spread on that of uh, 113, 110. And I did that for a dollar 28, I think. Um, so I like the arm short, irrespective of what the market's doing. It's very relatively weak. Um, and so I put that one on, but uh, everything else I'm holding off until I see if there's a bounce. Yep, that looks like a really nice position. You can see how it did not bounce early this morning. So you can, the market had a nice little, <clears throat> excuse me, gap higher. Arm was soft right from the open. Now, part of that is that we had earnings from ASML. They are a manufacturer of semiconductor equipment, and you can see there's your earnings reaction. It has put a lot of pressure on the chip stocks. The chip stocks have been one of the sectors that have led the market rally. Lots of excitement over AI. And that has been fueling some of the big tech giants as well. So when you lose one of the leadership groups like that, it hurts. The other issue that we've had is I'm going to put up XLF because the banks have been dominating the earnings scene over the course of the last five days. And there you can see XLF is also starting to pull back after a very big, nice, tight, solid run. So you don't have leadership from this group currently either. I think both of those need to turn around and then we've got a decent shot at uh, having a really nice bounce. So an earnings reactions, you know, it's, we're getting into the crux of earnings season right now. Earnings reactions can often be misleading for two, three, four, five days even. Mm -hmm. And that initial move is not always the indicative 
of the future direction of the stock. So be very careful. That's why we always suggest, you know, give the stock five or 10 days to settle out after that earnings announcement, because it could look a lot different after that time has passed. Here's a uh, example of something I posted a while ago um, about trying to interpret the news on yourself. So Jack, you, you say, do you guys have thoughts on NUE? Biden calling for increased tariffs on Chinese steel. Stop doesn't look terribly strong before the news, but wasn't sure if that would be enough to be short to get clear. Well, first off, um, NUE is up today on a day where the market's down. So right off the bat, uh, the stock is strong. Secondly, it's bouncing off of its 50 SMA. Uh, so when you're looking at the SMA and you're looking at that level of support, uh, that level of support on NYU hasn't been broken since November of last year. So you're looking at this level of support here. You're looking at relative strength today. So just looking at the chart alone, obviously there's no reason to short, but now you're saying, okay, but there's potential news on the horizon. But is there, you, you read that headline, right? I'm guaranteeing you read the headline. Probably not. Did you read the whole article? You probably grabbed the headline, maybe the first couple of points in the article. Uh, did you know Biden just came out and said, no, I'm not. I'm not doing that. Uh, there is no trade war with China. Um, so, you know, when you're trying to interpret the news and, you know, is it a clickbait headline? Is it just a is it is it verified? Do you know for a fact that's happening? And even if it does happen, do you know what the response of uh, metal stocks have been when uh, tariffs have been placed in the past? Um, and do you know whether or not the assumption of uh, tariffs on steel is uh, already priced in to that stock? You don't know any of those things, right? Let alone know whether or not the report itself is correct, that there would be a tariff putting into place, which would be a big deal, granted. But putting aside whether or not that's even correct, you don't know what's priced in. You don't know the historical reaction. What you do know is the price action is telling you that this stock currently is strong. So uh, certainly would not be uh, shorting it. Uh, and that there is just an example of don't get too carried away with your own interpretation of what the news is saying. And even if you have a very clear idea of what the news is saying, do you know how much of that news is already priced in? Because I guarantee you, you reading that headline might be the first time you've heard of it, but there is no way that institutions haven't heard of this and been thinking about it for quite some time. So is it already priced in? Probably. Uh, so there's your answer on uh, NUE. I think your last point was spot on. Institutions know every congressperson there is. They have their ear to the wall. They pay for this information. They know which way the wind is blowing. You and I don't have those resources. The headlines don't convey those that information. Headlines are old news. What does convey that information is price action because the institutions, if they feel they have something legitimate, if they feel they have an edge, they are going to act on it. And right now, this stock has a nice, strong, upward sloping pattern. There is no short here. Harry and I will show you a hundred stocks today that are much, much, much better shorts than this stock yes. because they are already breaking down. Technically, institutions are selling them. That is the tailwind that we want at our back, not, well, maybe this and maybe that, and maybe it can break down. And we want that breakdown already happening on heavy volume. That's what sets up a trade. And by the way, what you just said, very important, which is it is old news once it hits the headline. So keep in mind, there is a difference between acute news, right? Earthquake, boom, that's acute news, right? Nobody knew that was going to happen, right? Bam. Or, uh, some sort of traumatic event or some sort of big, you know, uh, clear uh, announcement I know or someone stepping, whatever. Acute news where you can be reasonably certain that, like an earthquake, you can be 100% certain, chance of though nobody knew, right? Uh, CEO stepping down uh, out of nowhere, supposedly a surprise, but chances are some people kind of had an inkling. 
And then you have things like Biden discussing tariffs, President Biden discussing tariffs. Okay. There, you can be rest assured that if it's not acute news, right, if it's not news that just flash happened and everyone's learning about it at the same time, that institutions knew about this before you did. Maybe it was an hour before, maybe it was days before, maybe months before, but they knew about it. And their response to that is written in the price action. So yes, you might see when news is announced some algo changes, you might see some retail trading going on, but the real mover of the market, which are institutions, will have priced that in already. So try to differentiate between news that um, you're getting at the same time as everyone else, or news of, did institutions know about this already? And if they did, did they act on it? So that's... Uh, that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, Meta, short, someone said, specifically the weakness on the 11.35 Eastern Time candle. With room, it looks like it has on the daily. Lower along with SPY turning lower. What are your thoughts on that info? So let me take a look at Meta here. Yeah, I see the candle you're talking about. Um, but again, I, I don't know how many times I could say, look at the daily chart first, look at the daily chart first, look at the daily chart first, look at the daily chart first. What do you see on the daily chart? You see several lines of support here, right? You see your first line of support coming at this 50 SMA, which is at 4.92.92. So it's right on it, right on that 50 SMA. I would not say it broke through that. Then you have your upward trend line here coming from uh, February 13th. Just connect that over to uh, April 1st and then continue on to the bottom of today. Now you have a trend line support there on the bottom. So you have two layers of support that looking at the daily chart will tell you, right? And if you get enough experience with it, you look at the daily chart, you can just see it. It's right there, bam, right? You have the SMAs up, you see the trend line. That should tell you, okay, let me place alerts here. Let me put down some alerts. Uh, you know, let's, let's, what would I consider confirmation here? Let me put an alert maybe at, um, let's see here, you know, 489, somewhere around there uh, to make sure it's a clean break. If you get that alert triggered, now you can start looking at it. You look at the market and you say, okay, maybe now it's a good short, but wait for those alerts to go off. Always look at the daily chart first. Always, always, always. Yeah, I have uh, on my chart here, you'll see this red line. This is AVWAP E. It's calculated from the last earnings announcement. I find it to be very relevant. That is also coming into play right here. So you would need to get below those support levels. The other thing is you don't want to be hokey poking around. Poke, 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 poke. That's not what you want to see. When you take out a support level, you want to attack it from a higher level with stacked red candles, and you want to blow through it. You don't want to poke at it. You want to blow through it. I'm not seeing that right now, but there are many stocks that we'll be able to show you that have that pattern where I can actually go into breakdown times two, and somebody asked me about Alibaba. There you have a upward sloping trend line right here. Got a touch there. These are automated trend lines. That's the way that you like to attack it with these long red candles. That's the way that you like to break through it is with these long red candles. And this stock, by the way, notice it has been weak for a long time. This is a better short than what we were looking at where you have lots of upward sloping trend lines. I did have a question, Pete, and you know where I'm going to go with this one, Harry. This is one of my axioms. Harry does trade earnings announcements. He has fundamental information, and he enjoys doing that analysis, and he's got a great track record with it. My personal axiom after trying to trade earnings for about four years and trying to devise a system was that I never, ever, ever, ever hold over an earnings announcement. My personal philosophy is that at best, my odds are 50-50. This is a binary event. If I trade the way that I normally do, I can get my odds 75, 80, 85 percentile. Why would I mess with earnings? I don't need to trade earnings. Then I'm having to 
monitor the reaction. I'm having to adjust the positions. I avoid earnings like the plague. So never buy options over earnings either because the option implied volatilities are sky high. The odds are stuck, stuck way against you. You get the direction right and still lose money on those options. Yeah, the only way to buy options on earnings is to go to a delta 0.9. You know, that's and, and that's usually prohibitively expensive because uh, you want to try to mitigate against that high IV as much as you can. And to do that, you got to go really deep, deep, deep in the money. Um, and you're right. It, look, unless you have an edge, there's no reason to make the trade. Doesn't mean you're going to win every trade. You're not right. Anyone who says they are it's full of shit, but you need an edge. What does an edge mean? By definition, it means you're better than 50 50. Um, now people trade earnings and like earnings and I get what you trade earnings because you can get a big win, right? If you trade on the right side and you get a big move, you know, let's even say you're trading Nvidia earnings and you get an outsized move. Well, you can make a lot of money. Um, but first you have to get a move that is bigger than predicted by the market makers. If you're playing options, right? Unless you're going deep in the money. So let's say you get, you're at the money call. For NVIDIA. All that premium there priced in is the premium they expect on the move. So let's say you're paying $17 or let's say in NVIDIA you're paying $30 in premium there. Well, now you need to move more than $30 on the upside just to break even. So now you're predicting the market makers were wrong and you got the right direction. Very difficult to do unless you have some sort of edge that brings you over 50 50. If you don't, I mean, look, if someone came in and said, hey, uh, bet me $5,000 on a flip of this penny or core or whatever, would you do it? You wouldn't, right? I mean, why would you? Uh, and oddly enough, people who walk into casinos would never take that bet, even though that flip of the coin is the best bet they'll have in the entire casino. They'll never take it. Like, I'm not going to bet on a flip of a coin. That's, oh, that's ridiculous. That's still the best chance you'll have in that casino. You wouldn't do that, but yet Let's say that your your earnings uh, bet is 50-50. You'll still make that bet there. It doesn't make any sense. So unless you have some indication of, of an edge on earnings, and that doesn't mean a directional indication either, because like I said, all that could be very much priced into the price of the options. If everyone thinks it's going up, well, those calls are going to be damn expensive uh, to buy. So... Um, I play them. I like, like Pete said, I have through JPM some fundamental information that gives me a better than 50 50 edge. But still, as you notice, I haven't played many earnings in quarter one, uh, almost none at all for Q1. So I generally just stay away from it and stop trying to get the big home run play. I do want to point out our market view tab with pre-earnings options, because there's only one way that we trade earnings announcements. This is actually conceived by Dave Wise, one of the best traders Harry and I know. He's in our chat room, and this is a system that he came up with years ago. It's proven. And so what we're looking to do is to trade the implied volatility disparity between this week's option implied volatility and next week's expiration. And so what we're looking for, this is the table that we use. All of these stocks are going to announce after the close today or before the open tomorrow. And we can see what the option liquidity is based on our rating here. We can see what the open interest is. The column that's of particular interest to us is what's the expected move. And we know this based on where the at the money straddle is currently trading. So this is the expected move for the earnings announcement. This is the average move. And we've gone through and computed this over the course of the last three years, the last 12 quarters. This is the average move that the stock has made. This is the percentage of times that the expected move. So we track the expected move. We log it each time. This is the number of times that the stock has exceeded that expected move after the earnings announcement. So ideally, with this strategy, we're looking for companies that don't make those outsized moves very often, that don't go beyond the expected 
move. So when you see a quarter of the time, okay, this would be good. When you see none of the times, that would be good. So you're looking for low numbers here, 13% of the time, 13% of the time. And then the other thing that you wanna see is a fairly large differential between the at the money option IV for this week and for next week. And when you have a pretty large spread, and a low chance that the stock is going to exceed the expected move, then there is an opportunity to do a calendar spread. So I just wanted to point that out. So it's not as though we don't trade earnings ever. It's a really, that's a good system and we trade before and after. It is, just keep in mind, do not do an earnings time spread, calendar spread, if you don't completely understand how it works. You know how many times I put a time spread on the stock responds positively to earnings but goes way beyond its expected move so the time spread's fucked right it's done but everyone's so many like yeah this is great it worked perfectly nice trade okay you don't get it <laughs> we didn't want that move we we <laughs> wanted a move that as pete said stays within that range and it's it's, it's the simplest thing in the world you just add up the cost of the at the money call and the cost of the at the money put there's your expected range give or take right plus or minus that's the range you want to stay in. You don't want it to go above that or below that range at all. If it stays in that range, then the IV crush, which will hit this week more than next week, will make you more make you money on the trade. But if it goes outside that expected range, it won't. That's why you're looking for stocks that have a low probability historically of going outside the range. Or to put it another way, stocks that market makers tend to get right. The ones that the market rate makers don't tend to over or underestimate and tend to get pretty much on the money. Those are the stocks you want to do time spreads on. But if you don't understand what mechanism, how an IV is dropping, why IV is dropping, how it's dropping more this week than next week, how that mechanism is making you money on the time spread, don't do the trade. And, and make that a general mantra for yourself. If you don't understand how to do a trade, and what is causing it and what the scenarios that could play out are, don't do it. Just don't do a butterfly, don't do a debit spread until you absolutely 100% know how that trade works. Harry, I'm gonna show another feature we have for earnings because what the heck, we're in the middle of earnings season. It's coming up here. ASML, I just happened to bring this chart up because they announced earnings after the close, or excuse me, before the open today. Earnings reaction, e-reaction is a tab that we have in Option Stalker Pro. So when the company announces, we can go back and see what that initial price action has been on a five minute chart for each of the last four quarters. Is there a pattern? Is there a tendency that we can kind of sink our teeth into? Well, with ASML, you can see gap down, follow through. Okay, gap down, follow through. All right, gap down, not much follow through, but okay, we can see that it has a tendency to follow through in the original direction of that reaction. Gap up, follow through. So it's just another piece of information. This is not solely something that you would trade off of, but you can see gap down, follow through. A really nice tool for those of you that are trading post earnings highly suggest using it and in custom search we have so many ways to search and filter out earnings who's going to be announcing do they tend to rally into earnings who did announce what has the reaction been since the announcement so we've got all of this built in i think it's unique to option stalker pro i don't think that other platforms have nearly as much information surrounding earnings. Someone asked here, what is my plan with the Marvel BPS? So obviously I have a bullish put spread on Marvel 69.68. Today it broke below that. It actually started the day fine. It was all the way up by 69 and was just fine leaving it on. Now it broke below it. The question is, is now you can close it out, obviously, and take a loss. Um, or you can buy back the short puts and ride the long puts. Now, the idea would be, let's say I bought back the short puts right now for $2.48. The long puts are $1.73.
if you want to get full profit on that trade, you hold the long puts until they hit two dollars and forty eight cents, right? Until until they hit the price that the short puts that you bought back um, of what you bought it back for. Um, the question for me right now is, do I want to buy back those short puts at the moment with the market so close to support? Because if the market bounces here, I'm going to get a bounce in marble. How much of a bounce? I don't know. I still have two more days on the trade. So my inclination would be if we break support here on the market or if uh, tomorrow it looks like we're still heading down, I'll probably buy back those short puts and ride the long puts to get to either break even or profit on the trade. If, uh, if not, then uh, otherwise you can close it for, um, for the loss. But uh, there's still two more days on the trade. It's not that far. Um, and if we get a market bounce here, Marvel will probably bounce right up with it, as most semis will. And so that's what I'm looking for. I'm right at that support level in the market. I'm not going to make any moves at the moment until I see where we're going. And, and you know, to this point, last week, we mentioned Marvel because we had put that bullish put spread on, but we also said, you know, listen, when you see this long red candle here before the jobs report, this is your warning sign, okay? This is when if you had too much risk on, you needed to adjust your long positions. And this is when you start making your decisions, which bullish put spreads do I want to hang on to? Which ones do I want to shut down? You still had time and those positions were profitable. Same thing with your long stock positions, okay? All right, I've got this information. It's time to lighten the load up a little bit and then see where we go from here. But we can sense that we are going to see some follow through to that big, long red candle. So, you know, if Harry's going through his positions, he's going to proactively manage them and decide, yeah, you know what? This thing's holding up pretty well. I get one little market bounce in here somewhere along the line. This thing is going to spring right back. So, yes, I'm going to hang on to it. But again, that decision could have been made right in here. Someone said, um, uh, given the market transition we've seen, would you still recommend, for example, a bracketed butterfly on Google? I never recommended a bracketed butterfly on Google. Um, and looking at Google here, um, looking at the ATR, 3.21, and you're looking to do 160, 162, 165 calls, 150, 147, 145 puts, bracketing it there. Um, I don't see any reason to do a bracketed butterfly on Google at all. I mean, if you're doing it for the earnings, um, but Google doesn't move enough um, on earnings. You, you, Google's kind of a one-zero thing. Google's either going to move uh, within a very within a very small range. Don't worry about the ATR when you're talking about earnings. Earnings is going to blow your ATR out of the water, um, or you're going to get uh, an oversized move. So. I, there are plenty of, of other stocks like NVIDIA that's much better for a bracketed uh, butterfly than, than Google is. Um, and how to trade when any news on Israel, Iran, or Russia has a potential to move the market in a big way? Um, well, one, you trade price action, right? And you got to be nimble. So make sure you're nimble that you can move in and out of trades. That's why it's day trading and swing trading and not long-term investing. So you've you got this sort of flexibility. Uh, two, okay, fine. Here's, again, I, I wrote a whole thing on this. Certain news events, the, the, the more acute, the more uh, pertinent the news event, the more it can override technicals, right? So major technical support on SPY right here, 500. Psychological support, all the support right here, 500. However, if there was a breaking news event in the Middle East or Russia or something like that, that could break through your technicals. Now, if you're a technical trader, that's an environment you might not be comfortable in. You might not be comfortable in, you're making these trades based on all the technicals, but any moment, boom, a big news event can come and change it. But in today's world though, if you don't trade because of that, you're almost never gonna trade. Because in today's world, there's rarely a time where you don't have the, the, the danger or prospect of a technical uh, breaking, a, a, technically, a technical breaking news event. Yes, it's probably heightened now. So if you're more of a cautious trader, lower your position size, be more cautious, 
take things that are relatively strong or relatively weak, obviously, so it gives you a buffer in case you get a big market swing. And that's, you know, the zone you have to stay in. But if you're always going to wait because you're afraid that there's going to be a news event, you're never going to trade. Uh, boy, this is a fun one. Uh, <laughs> I got to make fun of this a little bit. And Love it has hearing. nothing to do with politics. Okay, I'm just looking at the stack itself. Hey, DJT looks pretty good here. The market <laughs> is down and the stock is up. <laughs> so <laughs> this is sticking your head in the news. Okay, this is some dang heavy selling pressure right here. So is there a little short covering bounce in here? Yes, you do not fade that type of selling pressure. It ran up and now it's giving all of its gains back. There is no long here, okay? It temporarily has strength, relative strength on a five minute basis, okay? Could it continue to bounce? Sure. Would I be willing to stick my neck out on that one? Uh-uh. Look at this. There's the D1 relative strength. It's relatively weak. The longer term time frames always carry more weight than the short term time frames. So no, there's no trade there yet. It's bouncing off the 100 day moving average. Big deal. I wouldn't trade this thing from the long side until I saw a little bounce with another sell off and a higher low double bottom off of that 100 day moving average. Then I know buyers are interested. Right now, I don't know. The stock could have a couple of days of decent upside price action, and then blam, the next leg lower is $10 lower. Oops. It's a falling knife. Do not try and catch that. Now, I think you should tell them to go long there, Pete. I think it's a, I think, uh, I think that's a great, uh, a great long. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm, that, that that's not, everything that's that's not to five dollars. It's right. still overvalued. But no, no. Uh, you know, take a look at that uh, SMA there and go. Yeah, Pete's right. This is a short covering bounce. These are people who shorted it at fifty, sixty. We have some in our room. Dave shorted the hell out of it, um, and now figured, okay, time to take profit right at this little support level. Great. So you're getting a little short covering bounce. When the short covering bounce is over, who knows? But uh, that, that thing is uh, a meme stock, and it is uh, news-driven. But if you're just looking at the stock, I mean, look, again, if that stock went to $5, technically, fundamentally, it's still overvalued. So that should tell you that all of the action on that stock is going to be retail, and uh, you know what happens there. So you're getting that short-covering retail bounce right now. And this is the mentality that people get into. I've been told to buy low and sell high. Look, the stock has pulled back so far. This is a good place to buy it because if it gets back up there, if it even gets halfway up there, I'm going to get rich. And so they start buying dips like this, not understanding that this selling pressure is telling you exactly what is happening. The large money, the big money is selling everything they can get their hands on. And so there's a little bounce that lures in some dip buyers. They're going to get the door slammed in their face, and then you're going to get another leg lower. So this would have to form a base over a long period of time, weeks at minimum, with higher lows before I would stick my head in that noose. Um, someone wants to know what the name of the song on our intro is. I don't know, Will, if you know what that is. Uh Let's see here. It's How good, far back in the day we start? Consider, for example, INSP has been trending up since November, but still down compared to last April. INSP. Um, taking a look at that. I mean, Sorry, it, it you're looking, when you're looking at the daily chart, I, I, my daily chart goes back several years, but I'm really looking in the past couple of months, I'm looking at the trend lines. Most trend lines are, you know, start a month back, two months back. Some go further. Um, INSP has a trend line that comes in, you know, if you drew one from 1121 uh, all the way up 
and then it has one on the top part here. You could draw one from the top of 713. So, you know, there you have it going back to July. Um, but the fact that it's down since, what did you say here, down since last year, but now in an upper trend, pay more attention to the upper trend. That's what matters right now. What is it doing now? Um, what is its current trend? Uh, I don't know how far back yours goes there, uh, Pete. Yeah, I'm going back uh, quite a few years here also. I can also just flip into a weekly chart and, you know, get a long-term perspective on it. On a weekly basis, it's still right in the middle of its horizontal trading range. But, yeah, this is a nice little breakout to the upside on a daily basis. You've got a nice strong trend in here, a good breakout, a little bullish flag, a couple of trend lines to get through, but not bad. Yeah. Uh, here's where your technical bounce would come off 500 if you're looking for it. We'll see if it happens. But this is probably right around the area where you'd, you'd see a technical bounce off the bottom on the market. So this is what I'm waiting on here. Let's see if it happens here. Um, and someone asked, would a D1 candle close below 500 be enough to close down all swings? No, I mean, you're not going to get uh, a, a steady drop. You're going to get a constant test. So you might get a close below 500 and then you might get tomorrow it pops above 500. I mean, look historically, these, these 400, 300, 500, these lines take a while to either break or confirm. Um, if we get a strong bounce off of it, great, 500 in the rearview mirror. If we drop to like 498, tomorrow you might see us go back up. So I wouldn't, I would take a while. Confirmation is going to have a higher um, standard here on such a strong level of 500. But Here's where I'm looking for a technical bounce. Let's see if we get it uh, starting uh, on this bar, but um, it'll be interesting to watch as we're right there on that spot where it would happen. If you are a longer term trader, let's say you've got a two, three month swing horizon, which is longer than we tend to trade. You are buying on this breakout here. You're adding here. You're adding here. You're adding here. You are adding on the way up. How can you possibly have that much confidence to buy and add to the position? Well, your average cost is way down here. So, you know, no matter what, if the market does fall apart, you're still going to be able to bail out and make money on the trade. But you're averaging up to your winners and you have confidence in doing so because the price action is so tight. You've seen no dips along the way. And you know that even when you get a move like this, at some point, these buyers are going to come back. I can guarantee you they are going to come back in. And right now, everybody's getting super, super bearish in here because they see this and you are going to get the door slammed in your face and hard if you start shorting in here. Why? Because all these shorts are going to have to cover. And all it's going to take is a couple of long green candles. And now the heat is on. They have to cover. And that's what shoots you back to a new all-time high. Now, let's say that this dip is deeper and longer than we expected. You are still going to get that bounce. And when you make a lower high double top, it confirms this resistance. Now on that lower high double top, which is not that far from the previous high. Now it is time to take off your longer term swing positions. Now it's time to reduce risk. And for those of us who are shorter term traders, now is a time to start getting a little bit more aggressively short on a swing trading basis with the intention to add when we take out that recent low and then add again as some of the major moving averages start to fall. I had a question in there about which, how should we interpret this drop and everything. So I kind of answered that question. Sell stop is getting triggered right now. Yep. And so the price action this morning, you know, what I was looking at when I came in was if I'm looking at a five minute chart or a daily chart, doesn't matter. When I see a long red candle like this, could be a long green candle that's breaking out to a new high. What I want to see, long green candle, new relative high, is instant follow through. 
that legitimizes this breakout. When I get a long red candle like this, yesterday we had a doji, and I commented in the chat room, I view this as more bearish than bullish. This was a day of rest, okay? You're not typically going to see two long red candles stacked back to back. But now we had this day of rest. How far into this red candle did we retrace? Not at all. Didn't even get into the halfway point of it. Let's put that five-minute chart up. You can see that here's your drop from the previous day, Monday. Here's Tuesday. Didn't even get anywhere near into the middle of this range. Wham, 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 wham. Sellers are active. Near the close yesterday, it said, listen, normally we're going to see a bounce after a, a uh, decline like this. We didn't see any bounce. That tells me that any gap up tomorrow is going to be a fade. Guess what? Got the gap up. Boom, boom, boom. We start to fill in the gap. This was the tell for me. You see this bullish 1OP cross? This was our chance to attack that VWAP and get into the high of the day and then rally up right in here. We didn't have that happen during this part of the cycle. When we didn't rally and we started to leak oil, that told me, all right, you know what? We're going to continue to drift lower. And if we just drift lower in a very orderly fashion, this has a chance to gain momentum. Now, what we have to watch for is some type of selling climax. So we needed to continue to probe. We're looking for those long red candles and then long green bullish engulfing candles after that, and then stacking those green candles. Looks like Only you're going to be then. selling climax right now. I think so. Only then will we know that buyers are interested. Until we see that, we stick with our short positions and we ride them. Sean wants to know Ad Desk, ADSK, uh, Autodesk, um, good short. I mean, it's good. There are better ones. It's above VWAP right now and it's actually holding its own against this buy drop. So I don't know if I would uh, be so quick to short ADSK, uh, given the fact that, yes, it had a huge gap down, but since that gap down, it really hasn't shown relative weakness. So they're playing off that gap and nothing else. The price action today really doesn't indicate uh, a short on ADSK. But technically, uh, it, it could be. It's just it, there are better ones out there. I mean, it's not like shorting. It's a terrible idea. It's just look at the price action. Look at what the market's doing and look at what it's doing today. And other than the gap down, it would be a strong stop, wouldn't it? Um, let's see. Uh, do you take note of volume and how can we find out if it's buying or selling? Is it transparent? Well, if it's green bar, it's buying. If it's a red bar, it's selling. So, um, and then you just have the volume on the bottom and you put your 50 day average volume through that. So you could see, is it high volume or low volume? And then you can, you know, green, oh look, it's going up, positive volume, oh, red, going down. I'm not gonna, if you ask that question, I'm not gonna get into things like on balance volume and all that, just, just, just put volume on your chart, red, good, up, red, red, I'm sorry, red down, green up. Um, you know, kind of like a stop late. Okay. We do also have these uh, volume bars that we're able to highlight. So if the bar is hot pink like this, that means that this came on heavy volume relative to what that five minute bar would normally have. We have this across all time frames. By the way, if I were looking at a daily chart, I'd be able to see the same. And then this long, green candle is fluorescent colored green that means that this took place on heavy volume so it's easy for us to pick those points out in the chart there's a 20-year bond auction coming up at one o'clock which uh you think of it this way if the market is looking for an excuse to pop they could get it there right i mean if you're looking for a possible you could also get the excuse to stay below 500 but uh if you're looking if it's market's looking for any excuse it could get it um at uh you know on something like that bond auction but here you see that in almost that entire red candle being retraced we're back up to 500 on spy um and those sell stops that were triggered uh have been erased so again this is where i'm looking for that zone this whole area i'm looking for the bounce on 
at this 500 level and looking to see how, how strong it holds and if we bounce off of it, if it's going to be defended or not. And another nice pattern, too, is a long red candle that's forming, 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 hasn't completed, that finishes as a big, long, giant, bullish hammer with a big tail underneath it. That's another good one. This is not quite big enough to qualify for that, but you want that big washout. And just as the candle's ready to complete, bye, 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 bye. you see it race all the way back up, leaving that long tail. And then after that, you need the follow through. That candle alone is not enough. Then you want to stack another nice long green candle right after it. If you see that, okay, you might have started to find support. And then you want to stack green candles after that, especially after persistent selling like this, because what you have to be very cautious of, okay, is what we call a solo. And this is a trap. Oh, is this a beautiful trap that institutions set? They spark some short covering. You get this nice solo, this long green candle. Well, that gets everybody super excited. Oh, there's the low I've been waiting for. And then you buy and they smack that thing right down. And what that does is it tells us that you didn't cover, you, you didn't cover your shorts, you held firm, you didn't buy, you did good. That selling and the way that that candle gets destroyed tells you you're on the right side and that the selling pressure is still very aggressive. And on that candle, I would actually add to short positions if I saw that. Um, HD short. Yeah, it was a good short all last week. I, I didn't play it, but it was good. Um, now look at the daily charts right on support. It broke through a little bit, kind of like in, in HD and Meta are in a sort of similar boat at the moment. HD is a better bearish trend, but they're both sitting on daily support. Um, Meta, actually, the alert went off. So, but again, like the market right here, literally at 500, you could get a violent bounce, right? Any short you put on, I don't care how weak it is right now. If you get a violent bounce, it's not going to withstand it. If you think you should go to see a good long and we break below 500, uh, it's not going to withstand that drop either. Right now is where you stop, revaluate, and watch this market. It is at 500, literally on the penny. Um, it, it's going to go, if it goes up, it's not going to be gradual. You'll probably see a violent bounce up or you'll see the market just capitulate here and down it goes. So I would not touch uh, anything at the moment until it is clear what the market is about to do. Because if you short here and this market bounces off 500 and finishes at 504, 505, you are fucked. Um, and <laughs> if it does that, then you can look for that bullish trend to continue tomorrow as well. So your shorts will be screwed. So give yourself a, a pause and watch the market, see what happens, see if we bounce off 500 and how much we bounce by. So I'm gonna, let me just give an example to that too. So, you know, when the market goes down and let's go back to, uh, oh, let's go back to 2002. So you've got, this is the top right in here and the market's going down and you've got this heavy selling pressure. There's your upward sloping trend line, okay? Hey, the Fed's raising interest rates. Oh my gosh, the economy is going to fall apart. And so this is how 2022 starts off. Well, now you've just broken through this upward sloping trend line. This market is going to go to hell in a handbasket. I can feel it. Ha! Look at these long red candles stack. Oh yeah, short, 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 short. Oh yeah, this is beautiful. Look at the magnitude of this bounce. Do you see how tall that was? That was probably a 300 point S&P bounce. Same thing here. Ha ha. Now we get the next leg lower. Oh, this is going to be great. Look at the bounce from 405 to 440 right in here in a matter of days. It's a 400 point S&P 500 bounce. So on the short side, everything's going to look Great, 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 great. Look at this baby fall apart. Oh, I'm getting so short. And then you get your head handed to you. And then you look at it two months later and you go, dang, I was right. The market did keep going down, but it had these stupid bounces in between. 
Well, that's what we're setting up for right now. There is going to be a bounce. So until we see that lower high double top, I would not be getting aggressively short with swing trades. Stick to day trades. Keep them on a tight leash and beware of that bounce because it's coming. You know, it's, I had to bring up, this is one of the few rare times I'm going to agree with Jim Cramer. Um, and I don't watch him, but I've read the, the piece on it. Uh, where he came out and said, you know, we started this year with uh, the market. And uh, when I say the market, institutions, everyone, thinking there's going to be four rate cuts. There's going to be all these rate cuts coming into this year. We're going to get rate cuts, right? All these people who all they remember is free money for like 10 years if money was basically free. Uh, with interest rates down to almost zero. And they quickly forget that a 5% interest rate is normal. This is a normal level for an interest rate. And so, he, you know, he points out the economy is going full blast right now. We haven't seen unemployment numbers like this in like 40, 50 years, if even then. We haven't seen jobs numbers like this. We haven't seen uh, revenue numbers like this, uh, manufacturing numbers like this, earnings numbers. I mean, just look at the earnings numbers and all of these stocks tell you how the economy is doing. So you have this economy going full blast. Why would you cut rates when that happens? Why should anyone in their right mind be expecting rate cuts? Now, there will be, I'm sure, because Powell pretty much said, yeah, we're going to. But uh, there's no reason to cut rates. Rates are at a normal level right now with the economy going full blast. You want to put those, keep those bullets in your in your ammo uh, in case the economy starts to falter. You can jolt it with a rate cut. No reason to jolt it when it's already jolted. Uh, so the economy is red hot. And when that happens, you generally don't cut rates. But yet the market continues to think there's going to be rate cuts. Um, they, you know, it started with four, then three. Now it's down to two. The only thing now that because the market was bolstered on the idea of those rate cuts is the idea that, well, we're not going to get rate cuts because the economy is so good, which means earnings are going to be great. It puts a lot of pressure on this upcoming earnings season, um, which is another reason for support on the market here with the earnings season just getting started. And I do not think the market's going to stray that far uh, from its 500 level without knowing what Apple, Amazon, Google, Meta, NVIDIA, all these companies are going to be reporting. And that's just a few weeks away. I'll give you another market example dating back to 2021. You get this big market rally. Oh, market so far ahead of itself. There's no way it can maintain this level. I can't wait for that first drop because that's when I know this thing is going to be such a beautiful short. So you get these long red candles for a few days, just like we're seeing now. Okay. Oh, here it comes. This is great. Boom! See you later. Nice, tight price action, right? What have we seen recently? Nice, tight price action. Every single one of these dips, I can guarantee you, because I saw it happen before my own eyes, the bears come out of the closet and up. Oh, this is the one. Yeah, this is the one you want to short, okay? And then you never hear from them again because they've been carried out in body bags. They lost all their money. These geniuses who tell you, yes, this is a market top, they're gone. You don't hear from them. And the market keeps going up. Yes, it's going to have pullbacks. This is normal. This is not unusual. Very normal. So, yes, I would be very careful with shorts in here. We have to see how deep this dip is. There's going to be a bounce. I am much more excited about playing this bounce than I am about shorting this market because that bounce when these shorts cover, I would not be surprised at all to get back to 525, even with all the dark clouds that you hear right now. And I'm not going to go through the litany of them. You know, you read the headlines. They're out there. When this baby bounces, there's going to be probably a good two weeks worth of get long, stay long, ride it. It's going higher. We stall out at the high. Take your profits. If we blow through it, hang on to those trades. That's how I'm going to be trading it. I'm just waiting. That's a good point where you're going to have a lot of short. If you get a bounce here, you're going to have a lot of short covering. You're going to have a lot of people who rode this down, and then now they're like, got to get the fuck out. Time to go. And off they go. And that's just going to drive it, fuel it even higher. 
Um, we are about 30 seconds away from that bond market release, which is going to have an effect here, particularly given that we're at 500. And it's no coincidence that we're staying right literally at 500 for that release. So we're, we're at 500 and uh, waiting for that number to come out, which is going to be in 10 seconds. And you'll see what the next candle brings. Um, you know, this is going to be a temporary boost or, or drop based on it, but it'll it'll have an impact. So here we go. And 10 o'clock. Something, we'll see something where. on bonds while we watch is that uh, this year, and one of the things that uh, the government's been doing for many years, and I think it's kind of foolish, is they have been selling short-term durations. The average duration on U.S. Treasuries is somewhere around three and a half years, I believe. And this year, the government has to finance $7.6 trillion of debt. That means there's a huge supply of treasuries coming to market. That means that it depresses, it pushes down the price. And that means that yields stay higher in that environment. So it's something to watch. It is definitely a headwind as far as interest rates are concerned with that type of supply coming to market. Personally, I would have loved to have seen the government do what they do so well, which is to kick the can down the road. I would have loved to have seen them 10 years ago issuing 30-year bonds like there is no tomorrow. They kick that can down into the next generation, which is, like I say, they're very good at doing that. I don't know why they didn't. Pretty strange, by the way. The bond market has not yet put their option up. Um, it seems like there's some delay in it, which is unusual. You generally don't see a delay on the scheduled uh, auction times. So, so we should we should find a pick. I haven't even found a pick for today. Yeah, yet. we should find a pick, don't we? Yeah, we should find some picks here. I'm, I have mine. It's arm short. Arm short. That's a good one. ARM short is my pick of the week. You got your compression right here. You have your breakdown. You've got plenty of room down to that 100 day moving average. Looks like a pretty good one. And uh, tech stocks are getting, tech stocks have been getting hit pretty hard in here. I was looking at crowd earlier. I like the way that it's crowning right here and it's right on that 100 day moving average as well. You can see that it's been weak relative to the market since March 26th. So even before the market started to show any signs of weakness, it has been drifting, drifting, drifting lower. If it takes out this 100 day moving average, that's a short that I would feel uh, pretty comfortable with. Is it's already taken out the 50, it's below AVWAP E, it's got a downward sloping trend line, get through that 100 day moving average. What did it do today? Uh, You're looking at crowd short? Yeah. You got the 100 day right at 290, right? Yep. Yeah, so it's got to take the 100 day moving average out. Uh, the All market right, so bounces. Keep in mind that caveat. So it's got to take out that. If it takes out that moving average, crowd. Yes, I agree. I will. I will short crowd when it does that. And I'm going to right click, create alert. I'm going to yep. set the rule. I'm going to go into an SMA and click that and i'm using the 100 day moving average so i'm going to select that and i want it below that all the criteria are selected and it's saved and now i will get an alert when that happens and we probably should find a long right i mean here we are talking wait for this bounce wait for this bounce so we should have something in the hopper for that i would think so um let me see here good long all right, here we are. I might have mine. Uh, and by the way, as we start looking through all the searches, two months ago, you couldn't find a good short to save your soul. And now no. all of a sudden, it's hard to find a good long because we've had market selling. The searches and the number of candidates that come up in the searches tell us how we should be trading. So when it's lopsided, where you're seeing all really good bullish candidates and no bearish candidates, you should be sticking with the long side. 
When that balance is out, you see an equal number of both, you should be balanced. When you start seeing more shorts than longs, you favor the short side. It's how it works. It's it's built into the system. Let's see here. You know, oddly enough, as a long, I like shop. Maybe not today, but I do like shop. I like this, this drop down to the 200 SMA, this bounce off of it, and then today where pretty much every stock is down shop is not um shop is up i like shop as a as a long pick here um i wouldn't go too heavy into it but if you're looking for a stock that's ready to bounce and has and has found support and bounced off of it and now is sitting there with relative strength today shop is not a bad pick all right so for our longs i'm going to put a market caveat out there in order for us to even consider a long position. Uh, you could go with the open from today. You would at minimum need to be above that, but I would say we want to get through that 50-day moving average. You know, you want that low to be set. You want to blow through that 50-day moving average. Then that gives us a launching pad to try and challenge the high. Are you comfortable with that, Harry? Yeah. That way we know we've got support. We've been able to reverse these candles here and at least get back to the halfway point of that long red candle from Monday. From that point and above, and it, if it happens with nice, strong uh, price action and good volume, then yeah, I'm absolutely looking to take longs. So uh, yes, that's interesting. I did put out SPOT on Sunday and I still like that as a long. Look at how well that stock is holding up. So that would be my long. Uh, I did have another one I was looking at, uh, but that's that's the best long that I'm currently seeing out there. Yeah. Uh, I think everyone should keep keep in mind as earnings with earnings season, as you know, there are a lot. You know, the stock you may be long on or short on may not have earnings, right? But a uh, a, a a mover in the sector would. So you know, let's say you're long on a, a semi, but you know, Nvidia has earnings or AMD has earnings. Now those are movers of other semis, right? So how they do, other ones will do. So just keep in mind, check, take a look, you know, it's a very earnings whisper, whatever, you can look, option stalker, there are these earnings calendars, very easy to look at, and just be cognizant of what has earnings, what's coming up, and is your stock going to be impacted by these earnings? Because a lot of people, I'm not playing earnings, but in a way you are, if you're playing a stock that's so correlated to the stock that has earnings, you're almost playing those earnings. So just be careful with which stock you're playing and what has earnings that night or in the next couple of days, because it will impact your stock. Now, there are certain stocks that are market mover earnings, right? NVIDIA, for example, Google, Amazon. These not only affect other stocks in their sector, but they're market moving earnings, right? So they have to keep that in mind as well. But certainly keep in mind stocks that are highly correlated to um, your earnings. So I, I think my long here, uh, since I already used up spot, I would definitely keep an eye on that. I think my long is going to be Google. I just absolutely love this breakout here to a new horizontal high. The market's crumbling. It's falling apart. And this stock has been able to hold up extremely well. You put that S SPY above the 50-day moving average with earnings coming up next week on Google, this baby's going to go. And we know that 75% of the time over the last three years, this stock has had a tendency to rally into the earnings announcement. We know that from our database and our searches. Yeah, I like Google. That's going to be my long. Which one? Google. Google. Yeah, I like Google as well. I like that long. That would be another, that's a good pick. Um, yeah, we, we can answer a few more questions in the session. Someone asked uh, 20 minutes ago, they asked, uh, I dismissed it. Would you consider the 11 a.m. to 12.30 a bearish divergence on the 1 OP for SPY? 
Yeah, this well, this whole cycle has been just one kind of float higher, just this gradual uh, increase. So yes, I would consider this to be a bearish divergence. So typically when 1OP is rising as it's doing right now, we're going to see the market rally. When the opposite happens, it's rising and the underlying is falling. This is what we call a divergence and it actually is a sign of trend strength. And we also can use this indicator for stocks as well. So stocks though do tend to have more divergences. So you really have to be able to understand this concept and how to apply it. Great. And it looks like we're getting that bounce over 500. I wouldn't call it confirmed here, but looks like a, yeah. the auction has certainly helped things along. You have any more questions on your end? Uh, let's see. I'm uh, trying to uh, see if there's any for you in here. I think we've kind of knocked through a lot of them. Great. So, uh, man, I think we're, we're pretty good just in general. You know, we're yeah, both looking for short picks. They're long picks. Um, even CVS is still a good short pick, by the way, uh, from last week. But uh, I like Google long. I like spot long. I like arm short. And the other one was, um, what was your other short? Uh, crowd. Crowd short, yes. The... Crowd breaking through the SMA, yes. Yep, crowd breaking through the SMA. All right, everybody, keep it, keep your powder dry here. We're going to get a bounce. Okay, so if you're overloaded on shorts in here and you have longs or, or many short positions on right now, you are in peril because when we get this bounce, it may only last three or four days, but it's going to be big because you're going to have a lot of short covering. So best to just wait for this low to appear than to wait for that bounce. Your first decent trade is going to come on the long side. Okay. We don't want this dip to be to last another week. Then, then, you know, you can't be as aggressive on the long side, but if we get this resolved in the next couple of days, which I'm looking Thursday, Friday, this dip should be over. And then we get the bounce from this level. I think we could have a very considerable bounce, and I think there are going to be some really nice trades on that bounce. That's what I'm focused on right now. Here he is, too. Yep. All, All right. right, everybody. Thank you. Trade well. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.